Dante, and now the youngest flexer of the century. Merry Christmas, bitches! Can I ask you a question? Oh, uh, sure, go ahead. Why your mama make you so ugly? was born on July 29, 2007, although some sources claim she was born in 2009, and I'm unsure why. She is described as a famous Canadian-American rapper, singer, musician, social media influencer, Instagram star, and entrepreneur from Atlanta, Georgia, United States. However, she is actually a 16-year-old who became famous as a little girl and has been failed by not only her parents and her older brother or her managers and the adults around her, but we as a society have completely failed her. Today, we are going to talk about Lil Taylor Cosgrove and the drama surrounding her social media. I wouldn't usually showcase a minor child on my channel, however, this is a serious case of parental neglect and abuse to me. I want it to be known that the only reason why I don't feel bad for showing her is due to all the adults in her life already posting her all over the internet and exploiting her horribly. I want to speak out about that, and the only way to do so is to show you what happened. I don't want this video to be completely blurred, so forgive me, but this case is important to raise awareness about. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Lil Hay was born with the name Claire, but has since changed her name to Taylor due to her fame in that name. I'll of course be referring to her as her online moniker Lil Tay or Tay for the remainder of the video. She was born in Vancouver, Canada to parents Angela Tian and Christopher Hope. Her mother is Chinese, so she holds a mixed ethnic background. She grew up with a Christian belief system, and her parents ended up separating shortly after her birth. Her father remarried a woman named Richanee Alcover, who also goes by Hanny Hope and is some sort of social media influencer, I guess. She is allegedly a crypto scammer, and that information may be important later. They have a son together as well named Brock's Hope, although I couldn't find much information on him, so I am unsure if he is as exploited as Little Tay has been. Little Tay also has a half-brother who can be seen in videos with her often. His name is Jason Tian. 
It is said her mother and brother manage her social media accounts. Her father and mother fought for custody for her throughout her whole life. Lil Tay has claimed her father has abused her, though, and that information is also important later. I'm doing a lot of leading here in the intro and I apologize, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Tay began posting videos on social media in late 2017. She first rose to fame in 2018 at the age of 9. Tay was known for her sensationalized Instagram videos, which showed her rapping, yelling expletives, and showing off her lavish lifestyle. Bitch, I just bought a Lamborghini! Message to all y'all broke-ass haters! Hate me, bitch! This shit cost me 200000 I'm only 9 years old, I ain't got no license, but I still drive this sports car, bitch! Your favorite rapper ain't even doing it like Lil Tay! Ooh, Lil Tay out here booing in the trap house, me and my Billy buzzing on a whole lot of gang shit, and we be moving bricks! I'm only 9 years old, but I be flexing on mama's ramp! Fuck the Smith & Wesson, we keep a big chopper on us on the streets! Bitch, if y'all try to mess with us, I'ma shit it on your mama! We had a whole lot of gang shit! Get it! Recently, there has been a lot of controversy surrounding her, and that's not really new. However, she has been making tabloids after a hiatus from social media. But let's rewind for a moment and talk about her social media influence and discuss some of the controversy that took place as she was rising as this little star. Known as the child star who took the world by storm with her foul mouth rants and garrulous attitude, it seemed Tay was being plastered all over social medias by her mother, who had custody of her at that time, and her half-brother Jason, who can be seen telling her what to say behind the camera in leaked videos. She's been known to drop some racial slurs in the form of rap songs, and even during some of her rants. And this had some upset. People shared her videos saying, look at this little girl swearing and throwing cash around and flexing, and failed to realize the problems this could bring or how exploitative this all was for Tay. Commentators took to the tubes to call her out as the youngest flexer, which made her proud. She then became known as the youngest flexer on social media and was often seen, well, flexing that. After all, that's what little Tay did. She flexed. Due to all her flexing fame, her family had her do some rap songs. I mean, why not? Anyone can just be a rapper in this age of social media, especially with TikTok taking off around the same time. It is even said that Tay dropped out of public school at this time to pursue a career on social media and as a rapper. Some people have been shocked because of Lil Tay's crude videos. However, they were more shocked and worried when her Instagram account was taken down after she was seen smoking. Smoking on trees, Damn. smoking on pee, Ooh. money way that is the key. Commentators and other social media influencers began asking where her parents were. How come such a young child was being exploited and posted all over the web, doing adult-like activities? People accused her mother of exploiting her daughter and being a child abuser. I'm going to bring up again that I myself am a mother of a 9-year-old little girl, and I watch these videos of Tay's in shock. I could never. If I ever heard my daughter talking like that, she would be in trouble. So I have empathy for Tay as a mother of a child who is the same age age as she was when she began to receive her fame. It really does seem as though the adults pushed her to be this little flexing gangster and get into as much controversy as possible for the views. Lil Tay was even seen backstage at Coachella in 2018 with Wo Vicky, who was getting into an argument with Danielle Brigoli, and the whole video really brings you back to reality. Tay stands there, next to Wo Vicky, looking petrified of what's about to happen as the two girls begin to throw hands. In this moment, you can see just how young Tay truly is. She's not some flexing gangster, but just a little girl who was caught up in social media and had no one to look out for her who was willing to put her childhood first. What's even more messed up is this fight was caused due to Danielle, also known as Bad Baby, claiming that Wo Vicky and Tay had called one of her friends the N-word, so she was still using slurs quite often. 
Tay then took to her channel to release a video claiming Bad Baby was clout chasing she and Vicky, and the whole beef was just a mess. I do not think Tay should have been involved at all. However, everyone here were teens and preteens, so again, this issue is up to the adults around them to step in. When Tay was still 9 years old, I came across a bunch of information that she was under house arrest. I was like, oh no, that's awful, what'd she do? Then upon further research, I found out that house arrest here is tween speak for grounded. It's not known exactly why little Tay was grounded, but we can imagine a few scenarios. It appears she was grounded for a long time. This only made me happy because it was the first time I had read that she had some kind of consequence for whatever she was doing wrong here. She wouldn't even tell Zach Sang Show why she was on house arrest, though. No, Lil Tay, I thought you were on house arrest. I mean, I'm off of house arrest now. She's here with well, us. Well, I know, well, yeah, I didn't know if it was like working thing, but what did you do to get on house arrest in the first place? Okay, that's confidential. C-O-N-F-I-D-E-N-T-I-A-L. Confidential. Wow. You spelled it right. You did a good job. And I'm a Harvard you... dropout. What do you expect? <laughs> In May of 2018, Good Morning America did a show where Little Tay was the topic and her mother tried to defend herself against people's judgments of her parenting. She was believed to be the one who planned and instructed Little Tay to make her menacing and offensive videos. In what I can only describe as a horrid display, Tay's mother, Angela, sat beside her daughter as the child star defended her mother. Again, not something a child should be made to do. Shooting in anyone else's house. You didn't shoot in anyone else's house. Just like... No one has proof that I did. My mom doesn't run social media. I use my own Instagram. These images will live on and follow you for the rest of your life. Is a nine-year-old really capable of making this kind of decision? This is my decision. I'm happy with what I'm doing. She is a well-mannered and a great kid. But that's not what comes across on the internet. People think it's like funny, I guess, because I'm nine years old and I've accomplished so much. I don't think a lot of people are believing that you're making millions of dollars at nine. If they don't believe that, then I don't really like care. A lot of people are gonna say this and that. We just we just keep going. Haters, like I'm trying to make my mom proud. You don't look very happy. I mean, that was before. Like now, I'm happier than before. What's your reaction to all of the haters who are basically online bullying your daughter? We choose just not ignore them. She has a passion passion and a dream. In June of 2018, Lil Tay's Instagram account was taken down with a corresponding cryptic post that had the words help me set against a pitch black background. This led people to campaign to help what appeared to be a distressed child. People would make posts and then they would put the hashtag free Lil Tay. Luckily, to people's delight, the Instagram account was up again in October of 2018 as her mother claimed that her child's account was hacked. Remember that, the account was hacked. According to reports, Little Tay's mother Angela was allegedly fired from her job at Vancouver real estate agency Pacific Place Group for assisting Little Tay with her videos. Thing is, Little Tay and her family weren't rich at all. They were using the homes and cars of those who hired Angela as a real estate agent. Little Tay would go with her mom to work, then they would use these other people's homes to pretend they were living there and flex all over the property using their cars and other luxury items. When we found out about this activity last week, we had to dismiss her, her former boss Jim Liu told the Daily Hive. There is no place for this sort of activity in our industry. Angela has only been a realtor with our brokerage firm for only six months. Imagine hiring someone and six months later you find out they were doing this. It's so bizarre. She was called out by a Tozy for this in several videos dreams just like I did. So it's obvious they've been using the benefits their mom gave them, being a real estate agent at the time, to really using that as an advantage to get over a million followers on Instagram. Like, you have to agree, that's fucking impressive. And it starts to get pretty confusing when the Canadian news is saying Lil Tay's mom wasn't fired, she just Instagrammed her boss's car without his permission. Then four days later, The Verge comes out with a post saying nine-year-old Instagram star Lil Tay's flexing got her mom fired. That's only the beginning of her reign of terror. What the f- What kind of person wrote this? Who, who uses reign?
reign of terror when it comes to a nine-year-old. After this, little Tay's father applied for custody again as he and Angela were in an ongoing custody battle since the divorce. The application was stating that Tay was being exploited by her mother and brother. I mean, she was. However, this story takes a dark turn at this point. Again, trigger warning if child abuse is something that upsets you. Though Tay had been living in Los Angeles with her mother while growing her online presence, she was ordered by the court to return to Vancouver and into her father's custody in 2018, according to court documents obtained by People magazine. Then in 2020, a judge approved Angela's application for relocation with the daughter to Los Angeles and ordered child support from Christopher Hope, the father, again according to the documents. Soon after, her brother Jason took to an Instagram account and began to post their father was abusing the young star and was behind on his child support payments. One of the posts read, Chris Hope and his wife, Hanny Hope, previously known as Richie Alcover, have been living a lavish lifestyle and going on vacations all off of Tay's money. This is only 1% of the pictures I could get a hold of. Notice how Tay is in none of them. They have abused Tay her whole life and now they are living off of the millions they stole from her. Another read, these are some pictures of Chris Hope and Hanny Hope enjoying the millions they have stolen from Tay while Tay was left silent for of telling the world the truth and they shared this picture here the account also posted the phone number of christopher's law firm and email address resulting in thousands of messages guys please don't do that that never helps the situation just don't take these situations into real life lil tay's instagram account soon went dark again that december however tay broke her silence during a joint interview with jason and her mom for the daily beast during which jason denied being behind the allegations against christopher and claimed tay's account had been hacked when asked if it was Jason's idea to start her Instagram, Tay didn't confirm or deny. Right now, I'm in a bad situation and I don't want to talk about these things, she said. When the interviewer asked her to elaborate on the situation, she responded with Chris Hope. Again, that was her father and she didn't answer with my dad. But then some weird videos were released of Christopher talking to Tay's brother, Jason. I swiped them from the Atozi channel because he did cover this extensively. You watch them and then you decide if this is evidence of abuse or not for yourselves. You've been in her life for years and now you show up and now you want to use her career as blackmail to waive your child support expenses. How can you even explain this? And then you go on to manipulate the press to look like the hero parent. Have a good day. You're gonna come in and my mom and my sister now? Good job, Jason. <clears throat> nice one. What about the millions of dollars you stole? Real mature, Chris. You're gonna act you're gonna act like you're the righteous. In 2021, Jason created a GoFundMe for his sister, alleging that Tay had gone silent because of a court order from Christopher. He also alleged that Christopher had signed million dollar deals and taken all of Tay's money for himself and claimed that he had physically and mentally abused Tay. Jason alleged that all of the funds raised would go towards Tay's court battle against her father to give her the fighting chance in court to save her from a life of abuse. Christopher has denied those allegations. As of August 2023, the GoFundMe page has raised over $17,000. There was also a picture shared of Tay with a bruised face. There was a post with the picture that read, This is what Hanny Hope and Chris Hope did to Tay. They beat her, forced her to watch horror movies, dragged and locked her in a dark closet. Nobody is donating, and I understand it is because there is stigma around my name, and I am hosting the fundraiser for my sister. GoFundMe has a 100% guarantee policy that eliminates fake fundraisers. Tay has been beaten and abused by Chris Hope and Hanny Hope, and I do not want to see it happen again. Tay does not want this man to control her life. He has done nothing but tries to destroy her life. He has stripped her of everything. He has taken every last penny. The picture is pretty disturbing and graphic, so again, just to warn you, I'm putting it up on the screen now. Hey,
Lil Tay disappeared off social media again. Things were weird and everyone was worrying about her. Some people even started a rumor she was dead, and this led to a statement being released that she was off social media and living with her father in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. He did not want her to be exploited, and due to that, he had removed her from Instagram and did not want her creating rap songs with explicit lyrics and slurs. According to People Magazine, while speaking to The Cut back in 2018, Tay's father alleged that he was kept in the dark about his daughter's growing internet fame, and only found out after her school called him. Concerned about his daughter's well-being, he then got a court order for her to return home to Vancouver and delete her little Tay account. He just came back because he wants money, Tay claimed to the Daily Beast, alleging that her father threatened to have my mom put in jail, which led to her, Jason, and Angela erasing the Instagram profile together. Christopher denied Tay's allegations to Hollywood Life, saying, Everyone else involved in this situation is motivated by money and the possibility of making money off of my daughter. I am not fighting about money. I am fighting for my daughter, for her happiness, and for her future. Everything seemed pretty quiet after this. Some were still speaking out on social media, trying to save Lil Tay, and as stated, her GoFundMe is still active in raising money. It seemed as though the Lil Tay flexing had died down for the most part, and everyone went on with their lives as though there was not a minor child being forced to swear and use slurs on social media and make her family rich off rap music. That is, until this month. Wednesday, August 9th, a post was made on Tay's Instagram account that read, It is with a heavy heart that we share the devastating news of our beloved Claire's sudden and tragic passing. This outcome was entirely unexpected and has left us all in shock. Her brother's passing adds an even more unimaginable depth to our grief. During this time of immense sorrow, we kindly ask for privacy as we grieve this overwhelming loss. As the circumstances surrounding Claire and her brother's passing are still under investigation. After the statement was released that Wednesday, the social media personality's father and a lawyer representing her mother were unable to confirm the news to People magazine. Meanwhile, her former manager, Harry T. Sang, called the legitimacy of the post about Little Tay into question, her a statement obtained by People. Given the complexities of the current circumstances, I am at a point where I cannot definitively confirm or dismiss the legitimacy of the statement issued by the family, he wrote. This situation calls for cautious consideration and respect for the sensitivities involved. In a statement to People about the recent news, Lil Tay's mother Angela's Vancouver-based lawyer Fraser McLean of McLean Family Law said, Given the sensitive nature of the situation, we have no comment at this time. When reached by People, Lil Tay's own father, Christopher, said, I don't have any comment. The Los Angeles Police Department and the Los Angeles County Department of Medical Examiner Coroner have no record of the alleged death. Hmm, something fishy going on here, right? Well, that did not stop social media from blowing up that both little Tay and her brother had passed away. Everyone was upset and in mourning. Articles were being posted, YouTubers and TikToksers and people on Instagram were posting RIP dedications, and then many people were questioning the legitimacy of her death. What if she wasn't actually dead? What if this was some kind of hoax? For a full 24 hours, everything and everyone seemed to go nuts trying to crack the mystery. If Lil Tay and her brother had passed away, how did it happen? How were their remaining family members dealing with such a loss? A huge tragedy to lose two young people to what many people claimed was a car accident. I am still unsure why they decided it was a car accident, but many people did. I guess it was because that's one of the only ways it makes sense both she and her brother would pass away like together everything was weird though and everyone had so many questions that is until thursday 
when TMZ reported that the social media star was in fact still alive and that her Instagram had been guess just guess what they said I bet you'll never get it they said her Instagram had been hacked mm -hmm. TMZ cited a statement from Tay's family she also took to her Instagram and posted, I want to make it clear that my brother and I are safe and alive, but I'm completely heartbroken and struggling to even find the right words to say. It's been a very traumatizing 24 hours. All day yesterday, I was bombarded with endless heartbreaking and tearful phone calls from loved ones, all while trying to sort out this mess. Then Little Tay's Instagram following soared by 300,000 followers after her ex-manager declared he didn't believe her Instagram was hacked. In fact, a lot of people didn't believe it as this stunt was already used by them in the past. Remember when I told you guys to remember when Angela blamed the abuse allegations on a hacked account? On August 13th, Vanity Fair released an article that stated it appears that Tay had indeed lost control of her Instagram. Instagram account and that the death announcement was indeed the result of a hack. So reports TMZ, which says an unnamed spokesperson for Instagram owner Meta confirmed that little Tay is being truthful about not being able to access her Instagram and that the company helped her get her Instagram back from the hacker. Tay thanked Meta for helping to get her Instagram account back, TMZ reports, but did not say if she'd resume use of the account. So Instagram has claimed her account was hacked. Some people are still skeptical, and I have to say I sort of am one. They could be getting paid by Tay's and her family's PR team to corroborate her hacking story. We might never know the truth, but it is sus how people constantly claim to be hacked whenever some shit goes down with their account, right? It seems to be the go-to excuse these days, especially for Angela. Tay's Instagram account does sit at 3.5 million followers. As of right now, the good news is both little Tay and her brother are alive. The bad news is this story is not over. Richini Vega Alcover is in her late 30s and was married to Tay's father, Christopher, on June 9th of 2016. She has a son from a previous relationship named Cedric, and she shares a son with Christopher named Brox, as I stated earlier in the video. After the marriage, she began going by Hanny Hope on social media. Many people have claimed Hanny is a part of a scam. She has claimed she is not a scammer. When Jason was accusing she and Christopher of abuse, he claimed Hanny was running a scam. The funniest part about this to me is that the scam is actually an MLM company. Not just any MLM company, but the very MLM company that made it so the anti-MLM coalition was born. That's right, Mrs. Hope works for Primerica as a boss babe, hun bot, a MLM representative. I speak out about multi-level marketing on my channel often and report companies to the appropriate agencies. In fact, I have a playlist of over 300 anti-MLM videos and several other streams on MLMs. For those that aren't aware, multi-level marketing or MLM is also known as network marketing or pyramid selling. MLM companies use people instead of retail outlets to sell their products to customers. This puts the responsibility for selling into the hands of independent distributor networks. Under the MLM model, distributors are not employees of the company. Instead, they're individual business owners who recruit their own distributor networks to help them sell products. MLM firms rely upon this extended network of independent distributors to generate revenue. They must continue to recruit in order to receive a proper revenue to get ahead in their business. I am sure you've received a Hey Hun message on Facebook from some friend from high school you haven't spoken to since graduation wanting to bug you to join their team and they were in a MLM company. Good on you for saying no, by the way, because you told them no, right? There's a large anti-MLM community on the platform and all you need to do to be anti-MLM is speak out about these unethical business practices or support those who do. Due to the fact most MLM soliciting messages start with a hey hun text, we started calling the distributors of these companies huns or hun bots. They refer to themselves as boss babes. 
Primerica is one of the worst MLM companies created. It is an insurance firm with a long history of using high-pressure MLM sales and recruiting as its primary business model. When Primerica went public in 2010, Business Insider wrote an article with the headline, Meet Primerica, the Wall Street IPO that's really a multi-level marketing scheme. The company has faced multiple lawsuits. It uses 11 tiers of representatives in their pyramid. Yeah, 11 of them. The company primarily sells term life insurance as well as other financial services including auto and home insurance, mutual funds, and credit monitoring. Primerica was reported to have over 100,000 representatives selling the company's financial products the year it went public in 2010, with individual earnings averaging $5,156 per not month, but year. As I said, boss babes don't make a lot of cash. In 2012, Primerica was the target of multiple lawsuits, alleging that the company's representatives sought to profit by earning commissions after convincing Florida firefighters, teachers, and other public workers to divest from safe government-secured retirement investments to high-risk retirement products offered by Primerica. In January of 2014, the company ended up settling the case for just over $15 million. Our stepmother of the year here, Hanny Hope, joined the MLM in 2015, a year after the company settled this case. She has most likely been in other MLM companies before Primerica and before she was Tay's stepmummy. I tried to research her and find out, but there's no information about her online. As in, it is very hard to find anything about this woman online. Are we sure she's a hunbot or her LinkedIn's just lying? She has allegedly paid a company to wipe her internet history clean, so that's a bit sus. I just wanted to let you all know that little Tay's stepmom is a boss babe for Primerica. Can we trust a boss babe? Probably not. Do what you want with that information. I am surprised no other anti-MLMers jumped on this fact. I mean, little Tay's stepmom sells Primerica, guys. Apart from that, it is said that Hanny Hope also helps Christopher abuse little Tay. She has not been in the public eye whatsoever, and she has not made any statements about this. Only Christopher has spoken out and claimed all of the allegations are false. So I guess we will have to wait and see if she's ever going to be given a voice. Most social media apps require users to be at least 13 years old, but in a recent poll, parents shared that 50% of children 10 to 12 years old and 33% of children 7 to 9 years old use social media apps. Lil Tay became a child star at the age of 9 years old. That is very young to be plastered all over social media, as she has been. It is very young to receive as much fame as she did. While I was writing up the script for this video, I couldn't help but wonder to myself how being a social media influencer and Tay being exploited on social media would affect her well-being or development as she grew up. It is very early in studies of the effects of social media on children. We don't know much about it. This is why so many of us are against family vlog channels. Child labor laws are also iffy when it comes to a child star, especially one on social media. We are still smoothing out the wrinkles in society. I want to see what I could find out on the topic though, so I did just that. I looked up the effects of social media use and exposure on children and teenagers. After all, little Tay is not so little anymore. She is now sweet 16. So I wondered how she was affected as a child who got exposed on the internet at the age of 9 and how she could be affected by the exposure today. I found some interesting information. According to the Cleveland Health Clinic, experts are just beginning to understand social media's impact on children. One study shows that children younger than 11 years old who use Instagram and Snapchat are more likely to have problematic digital behaviors like having online-only friends and visiting sites parents would disapprove of, as well as a greater chance of taking part in online harassment. 
The same study says limiting how much time a child spends on social media may reduce some of the negative effects of using social media at such an early age. Another study talks about how children who use TikTok are developing tics and having tic-like attacks. Their experiencing a movement disorder brought on by stress and anxiety, presumably made worse by the pandemic and teases increased social media consumption. In addition to problematic digital behaviors, there may be changes in children's daily behavior at home like increased irritability, increased anxiety, and lack of self-esteem. Then, of course, there are the dangers of social media, such as cyberbullying, online predators, sharing too much information, false marketing, and dangerous viral trends. It does suggest to monitor your children's usage and limit their screen time. According to Pew Research Center's last survey, 95% of teenagers have easy access to smartphones, and 45% are almost online all the time. Therefore, controlling their usage can become challenging. According to the American Psychological Association, young brains are especially vulnerable to social media. They go on to say, between the ages of 10 and 12, changes in the brain make social rewards, compliments on a new hairstyle, laughter from a classmate, start to feel a lot more satisfying. Specifically, receptors for the happy hormones oxytocin and dopamine multiply in a part of the brain called the ventral striatum, making preteens extra sensitive to attention and admiration from others. Right next door to the ventral striatum lies the ventral pallidum, a region of the brain key for motivating action. These structures, which lie beneath the more recently evolved cortex, are older parts of the brain that drive instinctual behaviors. In adulthood, social media use is also linked to activation in the brain's reward centers, but two key differences may lessen harm. First, adults tend to have a fixed sense of self that relies less on feedback from their peers, and second, adults have a more mature prefrontal cortex, an area that can help regulate emotional responses to the social rewards. The APA also states, as children and teens increasingly go online for entertainment and connection, parents, scholars, and policymakers are concerned that young people's biology is making them particularly vulnerable to, and in some cases, even exploited by, social media. Further research shows how this biological vulnerability plays out in the lives of children and teens. Younger social media users are more likely than older ones to have body image issues, while kids who use Instagram or Snapchat before age 11 face a higher risk of online online harassment. These and other findings have prompted recommendations from the U.S. Surgeon General that social media and other technology companies help minimize fallout from their products, including by prioritizing the well-being of young users and by sharing their data with independent researchers. Starting around age 10, children's brains undergo a fundamental shift that spurs them to seek these social rewards. So if they are on social media at that time or younger, it can affect their biology if they grow up online. I also found this study here that talks about how excessive media usage affects children's health. It investigated associations between children's and mother's media use, parent-child interactions, and early childhood development outcomes. The results were that high screen times in children were significantly associated with lower percentile ranks in cognition and social emotional skills. High screen times in mothers were were significantly associated with high media use by children. Higher parent-child interaction scores were significantly associated with better body, motor, cognition, language, and social-emotional outcomes in children. It then went on to say that public health strategies should seek to educate caregivers as competent mediators for their children's media habits, with focus on the need for children to have frequent parent-child interactions. The most important thing a parent can do is spend time with their child as much as possible. I'll leave a link to the study down below if you want to come and check it out for yourselves. It is said little Tay did not run her social media accounts as a child. I want to believe her brother Jason and her mother Angela were running her accounts. However, once little Tay reached the age of 13, she would be allowed to handle the accounts herself. I feel 13 is a very young 
age to have your own social media. I'm unsure if I will allow my daughter to have her very own at 13. I understand a lot of parents allow their children social media at an earlier age, and you can do you. As a parent, it is always up to you to do what's best for your child and your family. Maybe your child is very mature for their age and can handle the pressure. However, little Tay was under more pressure than most children are when they're using social media. It's funny to think she was a social media influencer that didn't run her own account, though. I think parents should limit their children's exposure to social media. I have allowed my daughter to make some content with me and people bit my head off. I do not believe in family vlogging due to the effects it can have on children, like the ones we read here, but also because all the pressure is put on the child and then the child loses their childhood. Being an influencer is an adult task. I don't think we should make children take on adult tasks, and therefore, children shouldn't have their own social media accounts or be social media influencers until at least the age of 16, in my honest opinion. The issue wasn't just how often she was on social media or how her family exploited her, though. It was also what she was doing on social media, making rap songs with slurs, being around fist fights, and people I wouldn't even be caught dead near. It was as if little Tay ruined her public reputation before she was even old enough to have one. I hope she did make a lot of money because it will be impossible for her to get hired in a professional career after how she displayed herself on the internet, and that's just the honest truth. It's not fair to do that to your child, as the human brain isn't done developing fully until about age 26 or 27, depending on the source. This means that until you're in your mid-20s, you do not fully understand consequences or permanency. That means you should be hella careful about what you post out to the world. Little Tay was coached by the adults to act the way she did, and hopefully later on, that can help absolve her of some responsibility in her job interviews. As I said, I am a mother myself, and my daughter will be 9 in September, and watching this little girl, little Tay, act the way she did and get cheered on by everyone who was supposed to look out for her has been hard for me to do. That's why I finally made this video. But as stated, little Tay was too young to know any better. It wasn't up to her to gauge her own internet use. It wasn't up to her to protect herself as a minor from any future consequences of her behavior on the net. It was up to the adults in her life to look out for her as a child. It was up to society to protect her as a child. We all failed. Tay's family seems to only care about her fame. It turns out her mother Angela was not fired from her real estate career. Instead, she resigned due to not needing to work anymore. She didn't need to work again because she was exploiting her daughter and forcing her to be the breadwinner for her family, which is a huge responsibility to be put on a nine-year-old little girl. It appears her family does not have her best interest in mind, and I am wondering if it was perhaps a good thing for her father to get custody and get her off the internet. After all, it appears as though he's done a good job. I am wondering if her mother wanted to fake her death because she and Jason were running out of funds. Lil Tay was at her father's and being kept off the internet and could no longer be their piggy bank. I am wondering if the abuse allegations towards Christopher were real or if Tay was coached to make these allegations so her mother would keep custody of her and keep collecting those sweet social media checks. If that is the case, it breaks my heart and I hope the full truth comes out in future. Let me know what your speculations are down below and what you think should be done about little Tay's family exploiting her in the way they have. One day, she will grow up, be an adult, and tell her whole story. I'm very concerned about Tay's well-being and how all of this will affect her in the future. Actually, I'm very concerned about how social media will affect all children in the future. If a carefree childhood is a goal, Western society seems to be failing miserably. A survey of 500 U.S. children aged 6 to 11 found that one-third fear Earth won't exist when they grow up, and 56% believe the planet will not be as good a place to live. In previous generations, it was not uncommon for young children to be shielded from many of the world's problems, 
be that good or bad, those days are largely gone. Another study found 61% of British children say they have been affected by the recession. A study of 9 to 12 year olds in the UK also found 14% fear getting stabbed or shot. These studies all come on the heels of a newly presented theory that children and adults need to play more. Society depends on play, the thinking goes, and we've gotten away from it. There is also research that suggests that children and adults need to spend more time with nature, a communion that is good for our brains. Playing outside versus playing a video game gives the mind a much needed rest. By letting our brain sense things it is naturally attuned to. The big question on my mind is, does any of this indicate that childhood is truly changing, that the shift in play from outdoors and make-believe to long hours at daycare, the increasingly unavoidable news reports about impending apocalypse, the availability of electric games and online social networking, all of this is making kids less happy and more fearful? The next big question on my mind is, what can we now do as a society to change this, if anything? The issue is that it depends very much on the parents. So, if you are a parent, ensure you play with your kids more and limit their time on social media. Try your best not to exploit your child on social media to the public. If you are a public figure, take precautions to show your family as little as possible and protect them from those creeps on the net. If you see a child being exploited or harmed, please reach out to the appropriate authorities. I am unsure if people reached out to Little Tay's family or to resources in their area, or if they ended up with a bunch of calls to child services like I got myself. What I do know is, this is our fault. We are the ones who watched as this little nine-year-old girl was being made to grow up too fast before our eyes. We laughed and shared videos of her flexing or saying slurs and made her believe she was receiving positive attention for doing so. We subscribed to her social media accounts and grew her numbers, views, and parents' bank accounts. We are still cheering her on. We are still talking about her. We are still exploiting her. So let's stop. Nation. They call me a boy. 